state have failed us. So the American government has failed Sudan. And in spite of very good words and saying that they are paying a lot of money, uh, but they have failed. They couldn't take a decision they could have taken any time to stop this war. And they can take it now, actually. So we need a force to, to stop the war. I, to my knowledge, the African Union is ready. The East African forces have met many months ago and uh, they're ready to come in. Uh, I think there is a, an international will to support the neighboring countries like Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, whom I know uh, they are uh, willing to help so that these countries can uh, come and secure uh, peace in the country as soon as possible. And f finally, uh, what message would you like to convey to others? We know Sudan is just one example of the conflict that have raged uh, across the world. We know there's so many others who may be going through similar conflicts. What kind of message do you have for them? I think no war ends especially in these times of uh, 20th, 21st century and so on, with some one party winning. Nobody wins a war. Wars are now ended by negotiations. And since people will negotiate anyway, my, my advice is that people should negotiate an end to their wars as soon as possible. I think you obviously that's for when we put human beings at the center of everything, then it's very important that you're thinking about the people and how important it is for a country, one of the countries actually on the African continent that we proudly, during our studies, I come from Uganda, and I proudly say that the very first time I heard of Sudan, we were in P3 as eight-year-olds learning about the Gezira, Gezira scheme uh, cotton scheme, I think, and I remember there was always a question about that. So when I heard that the breadbasket of Sudan has been also impacted by the war, you really have to think deep about the people that are, are affected by the consequences of attacking a breadbasket. And before we conclude, uh, what message would you like to leave with our audience as we reflect on one year of conflict in Sudan? I think people should think of Sudan. Keep eyes on Sudan. Think of the suffering which is happening every day. There is at least now we're talking about 12, 13 million people between displaced and uh, migrated, but we are talking about 25 million at least with eminent famine uh, coming to them. The country did not do well in the two cropping seasons. Uh, because of the war and the lack of uh, delivery of uh, inputs and lack of stability of the farmers in their farms. And that means another few months from that, it's a, just a devastating famine and it will be the largest uh, in the world in, I, in my knowledge. Dr. Hamid, it's been a pleasure to have you on this conversation reflecting on the one year of conflict we've just basically looked at the general consequences of this war on personal community and country and most importantly on the livelihoods of the people again we look at a nation shaken we look at lives shattered we look at hopes people had dreams the children had dreams but for now all we can say that it's a hope shattered. It's a dream that kind of appears so hazy. But all we can say is that keep eyes on Sudan. And I hope that the next time we are talking, it will be a story of hope, a story that something can be done to redeem Sudan out of the abyss it finds itself in. Thank you so much once again. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to PulseCast. Uh, a, st uh, a platform where we bring you the stories that are making headlines. Thank you. Thank you.